The Early Life of Joseph Stalin Joseph Stalin, born Iosip Bessarionists the Jugoshvili on December 18, 1878 or December 6, 1878, according to the Julian calendar, came into the world in the small town of Gori, Georgia, then a province of the vast Russian Empire. The future Soviet dictator grew up in a modest household, an only child in a family marked by hardship. His father, Bissarian, was a shoemaker with a violent temper, exacerbated by alcoholism. Stalin's mother, Kik, worked as a laundress, fiercely protective of her son and determined to give him a better life. Stalin's early life was marked by both physical and emotional scars. As a child, he contracted smallpox, a disease that left his face permanently scarred, earning him the nickname Popmark Joe among his peers. Despite these challenges, young Stalin was a bright student, and his mother secured him a scholarship to study at the Tbilisi Theological Seminary, hoping he would become a priest. However, it was at this seminary that Stalin first encountered the ideas that would change the course of his life and the world. Secretly, he began reading the works of Karl Marx, the German philosopher whose writings laid the foundation for communism. Stalin became increasingly interested in revolutionary ideas that called for the overthrow of the Russian monarchy and the establishment of a classless society. The revolutionary path in 1899, at the age of 21, Stalin was expelled from the seminary, officially for missing exams, though some sources suggest his growing interest in Marxism played a part. With his formal education cut short, Stalin plunged into the underground world of revolutionary politics. He adopted the alias Kobar, after a legendary Georgian folk hero, symbolizing his embrace of the revolutionary cause. Stalin joined the Bolshevik faction of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party, led by Vladimir Lenin. The Bolsheviks were a militant group committed to overthrowing the Tsar and establishing a socialist state. During this period, Stalin engaged in a range of activities, from organizing strikes and demonstrations to orchestrating bank robberies to fund the party's activities. These criminal exploits, though brutal, were seen by Stalin as necessary for the revolutionary cause. Stalin's dedication did not go unnoticed. In 1912, while in exile in Switzerland, Lenin appointed Stalin to the Bolshevik Party's Central Committee, recognizing his effectiveness and ruthlessness. This was a crucial step in Stalin's rise to power, as it placed him in the inner circle of the party's leadership. The Russian Revolution and Stalin's Rise to Power The Russian Revolution of 1917 was a turning point in world history. The Bolsheviks, led by Lenin, seized power from the provisional government in October, marking the beginning of Soviet rule. The following years were chaotic, as the new regime fought a brutal civil war against various anti-Bolshevik forces. During this time, Stalin, who had become one of Lenin's trusted lieutenants, demonstrated his ruthless pragmatism, overseeing military operations and political purges in areas under Bolshevik control. In 1922, Stalin was appointed General Secretary of the Communist Party, a role that seemed administrative on the surface, but gave him significant power behind the scenes. Through this position, Stalin controlled party appointments, allowing him to build a network of loyal supporters within the government. This power base would prove critical to Lenin's death in 1924. Lenin's death triggered a fierce power struggle within the Communist Party. Stalin, initially seen as a less charismatic and intellectual figure compared to rivals like Leon Trotsky, outmaneuvered them all. He used his position as General Secretary to marginalize his opponents, portraying himself as Lenin's true heir. By the late 1920s, Stalin had consolidated his control over the party and the Soviet state effectively becoming the dictator of the Soviet Union. 
The transformation of the Soviet Union. Once in power, Stalin launched a series of ambitious and brutal policies aimed at transforming the Soviet Union into a global superpower. The centerpiece of his economic policy was the five-year plans, which aimed to rapidly industrialize the Soviet economy. Factories, mines, and infrastructure projects were developed at breakneck speed, often at the cost of workers' lives and well-being. One of the most devastating aspects of Stalin's policies was the forced collectivization of agriculture. Stalin believed that collectivizing farms, bringing them under state control, was essential for increasing agricultural productivity and funding industrial projects. However, millions of peasants, particularly the more prosperous ones, known as Kulaks, resisted these policies. Stalin's response was merciless. Those who resisted were shot, exiled, or sent to the Gulag, a vast network of forced labor camps. The result was a catastrophic famine, particularly in Ukraine, where millions starved to death in what is now known as the Holodomor. The Great Purge and Totalitarian Control Stalin's reign was marked by extreme paranoia and a desire to eliminate any potential threats to his power. In the late 1930s, he launched the Great Purge, a series of campaigns aimed at eradicating perceived enemies within the Communist Party, the military and broader Soviet society. Tens of thousands of people were executed and millions more were sent to the Gulag. The purges decimated the Soviet military leadership, which would have dire consequences when World War II broke out. Stalin also cultivated a cult of personality, portraying himself as the infallible leader of the Soviet Union. Cities were renamed in his honor, and Soviet history was rewritten to elevate his role in the revolution. Art, literature, and music glorified Stalin, and his image was omnipresent in Soviet life. He even went so far as to alter photographs to remove individuals who had fallen out of favor effectively rewriting history to suit his narrative. World War II and Stalin's legacy. In 1939, on the eve of World War II, Stalin signed the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact with Adolf Hitler, a move that shocked the world. The pact allowed Stalin to annex parts of Eastern Europe, including parts of Poland, the Baltic States, and Romania. However, the agreement was short-lived. In June 1941, Hitler broke the pact and invaded the Soviet Union. The invasion caught Stalin by surprise, despite warnings from his intelligence agencies and Western allies. The early days of the war were disastrous for the Soviet Union, with German forces advancing rapidly. However, Stalin's resolve during this period was unyielding. He implemented a scorched earth policy, ordering the destruction of anything that might aid the enemy. The turning point came with the Battle of Stalingrad, a brutal and pivotal conflict that lasted from August 1942 to February 1943. The Soviet victory at Stalingrad marked the beginning of the German retreat and was a major turning point in the war. After World War II, Stalin expanded Soviet influence across Eastern Europe, establishing communist governments that would form the Eastern Bloc. His policies during the post-war period were marked by continued repression, purges, and the deepening of the Cold War with the West. Stalin's ambitions led the Soviet Union into the nuclear age with the successful testing of an atomic bomb in 1949. Stalin's death and the aftermath Stalin's later years were characterized by increasing paranoia. He saw enemies everywhere and initiated more purges, even among his closest associates. On March 5, 1953, Stalin died of a stroke at the age of 74. His death marked the end of an era of terror, but his influence on the Soviet Union and the world continued to be felt for decades. In the years following his death, Stalin's successor, Nikita Khrushchev initiated a process known as de-Stalinization. 
This involved dismantling the cult of personality around Stalin, exposing the extent of his crimes, and attempting to reform the Soviet system. Stalin's body, which had been embalmed and placed next to Lenin in Moscow's Red Square, was removed in 1961 and buried near the Kremlin walls, symbolizing the Soviet Union's break with its dark past. Understanding Stalin's legacy Stalin's legacy is one of contradiction. On one hand, he transformed the Soviet Union into a global superpower, capable of competing with the West on the world stage. On the other hand, his rule was marked by unimaginable brutality, with millions of lives lost due to his policies of forced collectivization, purges, and political repression. The death toll under Stalin's regime is staggering, with estimates ranging from 6 to 20 million people. This includes those executed during the Great Purge, the millions who died in the famines caused by his agricultural policies, and the countless others who perished in the Gulag. Stalin's rule left an indelible mark from the 20th century. His actions shaped the course of the Cold War, influenced the development of communist states around the world, and left a legacy of fear and repression that would haunt the Soviet Union until its dissolution in 1991. In narrating Stalin's life, it's essential to understand not just the facts of his rise to power, but the profound impact he had on the lives of millions and the course of history. His story is a reminder of the dangers of absolute power and the devastating consequences of totalitarian rule.